Dave gone wanting more of his songs on the on the album and Ford according to the to Q magazine article basically said look um I know the band as it being its strongest with Martin writing the lyrics and Dave singing the songs and so you know obviously that might have been a gut punch for Dave gone but at the same time Dave gone's got to realize that his songs aren't nearly as strong he had some good strong tracks on Delta Machine but even the strongest tracks on Delta Machine lyrically didn't match up to the strongest Depeche Mode tracks in the catalog uh, the group is releasing the uh, record's first single, The Gore Pen Wears a Revolution. Uh, it's a mood that continues in another spirit song, Backwards. It opens with Gon singing, We are the bigots. We have, we have not allowed. We have no respect. We have lost control. It goes on to lambast some people's caveman mentality and how others feel nothing inside amid jabbing keyboards and pounding rhythms and complete with Gore's backing vocals. Um, that theme also resounds in another song written by Gore, So Much Love, a more upbeat, electronic-driven number about realizing that everyone uh, has love inside. It's like we have so much love here, we really do, but we're afraid to use it and access it, Gone said. It's like the old John Lennon thing, you know, peace and love, man. Now, the uh, sound of the ballad Poison Heart, a particularly catchy uh, number that Gone concocted with the group's drummer, Christian Iger, and keyboardist Peter, uh, Peter Gordino. Uh, they sent me this guitar line, and it had a bit of Muscle Shoals vibe to it, uh, Gone says. It was very different, uh, very different in feel, and I got this melody in my head. It opens with a slow funeral march in the vein of Screaming Jay Hawkins, I Put a Spell on You, and then builds to an almost Beatle-esque-like bridge with only a smidgen of noisy guitar. Uh, Gore, whom Gon says is not a man of many words when it comes to others' songs, called Poison Heart the best song that Gon had ever written. You have poison in your heart, he croons outright at the beginning of the song, and he later sings, you know it's time to break up, you'll always be alone. But Gon says he's not intended it to be a breakup song. The lyrics to Poison Heart are more of an internal dialogue. But Worst Crime is Looking Outward, another track on the album. It's bringing about the change. You've got to do something different or act differently. We can all talk about whether, uh, about whatever is going uh, on until we're blue in the face, but you have to really take action. And sometimes we don't know what that looks like. Individually, I believe people are inherently good, but we're really distorted by information we get, and we act out on that information out of fear. Another way he expressed that opinion on the album is in the song called Cover Me, which he describes as a story song. It's about a person who travels to another planet only to find that, much to his dismay, it's exactly the same Earth, Gon says. It's a different planet, but the same. He really can't get away from himself. If he wants things to change, he's going to have to, have to implement it. And it's interesting when he says it's a story um a story song. We, we, we don't really get a lot of story songs. I mean, the ones that come to mind most recently would be perhaps Perfect. Uh, Perfect has a bit of a, a bit of a tale that runs through it. Going back even further, if you go to Blasphemous Rumors, um, a little bit of stories of old. So I'm excited for this song. Uh, this sounds right, like it's right up my alley, actually. Uh, the article goes on to say, If the premise sounds like pure Bowie, it's only because the Starman loomed large as an influence on Gon and Gore throughout their career. When Bowie died, we both didn't know what to do with it, Gon says. There was a personal connection there. It was a huge loss. Depeche Mode paid tribute to Bowie at a special concert they recently recorded in New York City's Highline Public Park. They filmed the performance, which they did uh, without an audience, and which included several songs from Spirit with just a drum machine and Goron guitar. And they actually capped it off with a cover of Bowie's Heroes. I was so moved, I barely held it together, to be honest, Gon says. Martin listened to Heroes once, and it was mixed, and he randomly told me, wow, that's really effing good. And I said, yeah, it was, wasn't it? Now, Depeche Mode had not decided how they're going to release the film. Gon is eager for people to see the whole thing, especially Heroes. In the meantime, he's getting back into the headspace of performing live, spreading the band's new message of world awareness to audiences. Uh, the group is finalizing plans for a U.S. tour. Rehearsals are beginning in mid-February. One of the members of a, uh, of a group, uh, let's see, uh, the Depeche Mode have amassed a dedicated fan base. 
something that uh, resonated with Gone recently when he was working with his side project the, with the cinematic production team of Soul Savers. One of the members of that group, Rich uh, Machin, uh, told him that Depeche Mode r- uh, records like Violator and Songs of Faith and Devotion were among his favorites when he was 13 years old. Last year, it was announced that Depeche Mode were nominated to for the first time to enter the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Ultimately, they didn't make it. We're just not part of the fabric, and I'm proud of that, says Gone. We stick out as being something at, that's a little bit odd. We knew we weren't going to get up there with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but some someone wrote something like, they're a band-wearing eyeliner writing pervy songs about twisted, weird, and depressing subjects. I took that as a massive compliment, he continues, because we are a little odd. We've always appealed to the odd out there, the odd in the world. Our fans and the people like ourselves are a squad that... Maybe didn't quite feel right hanging out with others. We're a little awkward, a little nerdy, a little different. We found each other and it became a gang, he laughs, looking proud. It's a pretty big gang now. You know, that is um, that is 100%, 100% true. Uh, you know, De- Depeche Mode is, u- is unique in in my life. I know it's, it's in unique in so many fans' lives. And this is something that'll continue to be a you know a running theme with the um, with the podcast moving forward, uh, the fandom aspect of it, and why that fandom has lingered for so long. The band is different. The band is quirky, and I think it does appeal to. And I'll just speak for me. It appeals to my quirkiness. Uh, it is a little bit odd. We're all a little bit odd. Some of us embrace it in different ways. But, you know, here was this band <clears throat> that started off as a pop act. You know, back in the 80s, early 80s, they were considered, you know, the the Backstreet Boys or the Color Me Bad or the NSYNC of the time. They weren't really taken seriously. But it was clear from the onset that you had a group of of players uh, and and musicians who were offering up and wanted to offer up something different. And their pop sensibilities collided headlong with their with Dave with um, Martin Gore's writing style and his quirkiness. Look, Martin Gore when I was a kid was a weird dude, right? Look, and, and look, let's just, let's be honest. For those that didn't grow up in the 80s, for you know, I'm I'm 44 years old. As a kid, and I'm not being homophobic by any stretch. Follow me down this path, though. You know, Depeche Mode, clad in leather, and here's this guy, Martin Gore, doesn't wear his shirt half the time, is wearing a lot of makeup, a lot of black, you know, leather skirts on occasion in photos. And he's and he's not gay. And I remember as a kid, you know, growing up in a staunch Christian household and my you know, my, my father being being an amazing mentor, be, not not judging individuals. It, it was a very unique experience, and and Martin Gore stood out as a person who didn't care what other people thought. He didn't care what other people. He didn't care how he dressed. He he and he wasn't doing it because he was trying to make any kind of real statement. He was just doing it because he wanted to dress that way. And even as an older man, I always found it amusing that he you'd you'd see the. Um, the behind the scenes documentaries and he'd be wearing, you know, black um uh black nail polish. And he was a grown man. he's older than I he was older than I was, you know, and he's he and he's wearing black nail polish. It just again appealing to that quirkiness. And that translated into the lyrics. They took risks. They didn't hide anything. They were open and honest with how their feelings were. And I had a talent coach tell me once, I'll never forget this, when I started doing talk radio. He he, in, in his coaching style was great because it was very uplifting and positive. He basically wanted you to take what you find, what you do, and do the be- do do the more and the best of the thing that you do best. But ultimately, he said, you know, be as authentic and genuine as you can possibly be. Don't hold back. Be as authentic and genuine as you can to your audience, and you will find. And od- the the largest audience that you're capable of reaching. Now it's 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 exciting, but it's also terrifying. Basically, saying don't try to be something that you're not. Go out there and be who you are, and what you'll find is 
you'll be able to reach the widest audience that you are personally capable of reaching. Now, it may turn out that you're not able to reach a wide audience. It may turn out that the authentic you or the authentic genuine thing you create doesn't appeal to the masses. But you're never going to find out how many people it does appeal to, right? Unless you are able to step out there and be as authentic and as genuine as you can. And if you try to fake it, you're never going to know. Depeche Mode was always incredibly genuine and authentic. They didn't hold anything back. They had a they had a unique style and a different style. And from the moment that I got into them in the in the eighties um, until now in twenty seventeen, they continue to be that band that sound. They may sound like Depeche Mode, and people around me may say, "Well, that just sounds like that sounds like typical Depeche." Yeah, but you know what? Typical Depeche doesn't sound like anybody else, and that's one of the reasons why I love them so much. Because they they do break through. And you feel like you're part of a group. That's the amazing thing about going to, to a Depeche Mode show. That's why I've been to 32 Depeche Mode shows. You feel like you're part of something. You're there with a group of people. It's like being a Star Wars fan. You've got the code, man. And I don't care who you are. What's your background? I don't care. It doesn't matter. We're all just there because we love this band, because this band has given so much to us, and this is the one time when we have the opportunity to give something back to them by going and seeing them live and expressing our support as audience members, partaking in the, the content that they've created and continued to create year in and year out. They know, Depeche Mode knows they're nothing without their fans. And I'm a much better person <laughs> with having... Um, been a fan of Depeche Mode. I'm a much different person, and I tend to like who I am, and I like to believe that people like me as, as as well. It's always a special moment when we're on the cusp of a new Depeche Mode record, and uh, certainly when we don't know if it's going to be the, you know, the the last Depeche Mode record, right? That's always the that's always the other worry. Is <laughs> is this going to be the last one? I don't know, man. I kept thinking that, you know, after playing the angel, well, that's it. Oh, after Sounds of the Universe. Oh, that's it. Oh, Delta Machine. Oh, that's it. Now we've got them. I'm staring at album sleeves and CDs and track listings and hopefully U.S. concert date soon. I can't wait. It's an exciting time. Always a great year when Depeche Mode puts new material out. Thank you so much for downloading the podcast again this week. Uh, special shout out uh, to... Uh, Gabriella, let me see if I can pull the, uh, oh, and of course, I'm sorry, Gabrielle, excuse me. And of course my computer crashed. <laughs> Gabrielle from, uh, from Brazil had dropped me an email, the talk show, uh, nerd at gmail.com. 16 years old, huge Depeche Mode fan. Uh, I appreciate the email. I'll be in contact with her and she's going to join me on a podcast very soon. If you want to, along, uh, with Gabrielle on another podcast or let me know what you think, your thoughts on Depeche Mode, your favorite albums. What brought you to the band? Email me, talkshownerd at gmail.com. Uh, enjoy the new single. Enjoy these weeks coming up. Hopefully we'll have a new podcast next week. And until then, um, Depeche Mode on. Thanks. Bye. My... Nerd World.